Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra Martinez. I am a developer advocate here at Millsoft. On the previous video, we'll learn how to develop, test, and deploy our very first Mule application. In this video, we will learn some of the best practices to do with our Mule projects. Now, on our last video, we created an AnyPoint platform free account. If you haven't done so, you can just go into anypoint.mulesoft.com and create a free account for yourself. We also downloaded and installed AnyPoint Studio, which is MuleSoft's IDE. If you haven't done so, you can just go into MuleSoft.com studio and download AnyPoint Studio for your operating system. In the last video, we created our very first MuleSoft application. And in this video, we will continue from where we left off on the last tutorial. So to recap, we created an HTTP listener in our first mule flow that contains a set payload component and the set payload component is writing a hello mule message into the output of the call now to follow best practices we are going to create a global.xml file to keep all of our global elements what is a global element if you click on the http listener that we last created you will see this drop down where we have an http listener configuration you can edit by, cl by clicking on this edit button next to the add button. So if we edit, we will be able to see all of the default values that we created on the last video. We have the HTTP protocol, the 0000, 000 host and the 8081 port. Now just click on cancel and you will see that you are now in a global configuration element view. If you can see here at the bottom of this canvas, you will be able to see that there's a message flow tab, a global elements tab, and a configuration XML tab. All of these three will give you a different perspective from the code. In the message flow tab, you will be able to see the visual elements and drag and drop all of them to create new mule applications. On the global elements tab, you will be able to see all of the global configurations that we are creating for Mule application. And the configuration XML tab, you will be able to see all of the XML code that our application is generating. When we start creating more projects that have more XML files, we end up with a huge amount of global elements. And it's very hard to keep track of them if we have different XML files. So for this reason, we will be creating a global.xml file to keep all of our global configurations. First, we need to create the global XML file. We just have to go into the projects root folder and then go into new mule configuration file. Now click on it and this will open another window to select the name of our new file. Let's just write global XML and click on finish. We have our new global XML file. Now we just want to copy the global element that we have on this side. If we go to the global configuration file, we will see that there's nothing in the global elements tab. So for us to copy that, we can just go into the configuration XML tab from the hello mule file. And then we just have to copy and paste this HTTP listener config. Let's cut it. And then go to the global XML file, to the configuration XML tab. And notice how there is a mule tag right here. So make sure to add your global configuration inside of this tab. Now it's going to ask you if you want to regenerate the unique values from the doc ID tags. In our case, let's select yes. We want to regenerate them. This means that every single component that we have in the code has a doc ID. So the program can know that there are specific connectors. So each connector and each configuration should have their own doc ID and should not be repeated. You can find this doc ID right here. Now that we copy this, you will notice that there is a red line right here. This means that there is an error with what we are doing. And this is because we, we copied and pasted what we had in the other file 
but we haven't saved anything. So Anypoint Studio is giving us an error saying that the name must be unique. This is because the HTTP listener config, in theory, still exists in Hello Mule, in the Hello Mule file. So to get rid of that, we just have to save all in this button. Once we do that, our problems disappear. And now if we go to the global elements tab, we will notice that we have the HTTP listener config now in the global file, and we no longer have it in the hello mule file. Every time that we want to create a new global element or a new global configuration element, we should come to the global XML file and create them from here. The next thing we're going to do is that we're going to externalize our properties. For example, if we select this HTTP listener configuration and click on edit or double click on it, it will open this window that we have seen before. And as you can see, we have all of our stuff right here. We have the protocol, the host and the port, and it's all hard coded. We don't want to do that. So in order to avoid hard coding values, we will create an external properties file. To do that, we just have to go into the project search main resources, right click on it and select new file. This will open a new window where we will be able to select the name that we want for our new property. In this case, let's select global.properties and click on finish. Now in here, we can start adding the properties that we want. In this case, let's set up an HTTP.listener.host with the value 0000, 000, 000 and another property for HTTP.listener.port with the value 8081. Once we have that, we can save by going to the button or selecting Ctrl S or Command S. Now we created a local.properties file, which is going to be used for our local environment, but we also want to have one for our dev environment, which is in Cloud Hub. So we should click on source main resources again, then select new file. And this one is going to be called dev.properties. Once you have it, click on finish and add the same properties here once more. In this case, we will be using the same values for both environments, so we can just leave it like that. Also, something to keep in mind is that you can create .properties files or .jaml properties files. The difference is that when you use JAML properties, it is easier to see, but it's harder to copy and paste. And when you're using .properties, it may be a little bit harder to see, but it's easier to copy and paste. So it's really up to you if you want to use YAML properties or dot properties files. Now we're going to replace these two properties into our global element. So first we just have to copy the HTTP listener host, then go to the global HTTP listener configuration, double click on it and you will be able to paste it here. Now we will not just paste it we will actually have to use a very specific syntax. In this case is dollar sign and then curly brackets. And inside here, you will be able to paste the property that you just copied. The same for the port. You can just add a dollar sign and then curly brackets, and you can just paste this. And instead of host, this will be port. So now that we have that configuration, we can click on okay. And as you can see, we now have an asterisk here on our file, which means that we just modified it. You can press Ctrl S or Command S depending on your keyboard and you will be able to save it. Now, just setting up our properties is not enough for Millsoft to know that we want to use those properties. Now, let's go to our global XML file and then click on create. Remember that we are on the global elements tab on the bottom. So let's click on create and let's search for configuration properties. Select the element and click on OK. Here we have to tell the runtime what kind of properties files we want to be using. In our case, because we will be using local.properties and dev.properties, we can just select another property to put here. So let's open 
with dollar sign and then curly brackets and inside we're going to write env for environment this will change depending on whether we are in the local environment or in the dev environment then we have to put dot properties and this is because our properties are named environment dot properties once you do that click on ok and you can save now to tell the runtime that we are using the m property in each environment let's create a property if you search for property you will see the global property option right here you can just click on it and click ok or double click on it now it's going to ask you for the name and the value of the property in our case let's write the name as env which is what we just selected in the previous global element configuration and in the value let's write local so every time that we are on a local machine and we run this application the runtime will be able to know that we are running in a local environment click on ok and save now let's just verify that our project is still working as expected if we go to the hello mule file again and we go into the canvas right click on it and select run project hello mule the application will be deployed in local once we see that the status is deployed and everything went well then we know that this is ready to be tested so let's go back to our postman rest client and here remember that we had our last test with the cloud hub url we can just add another request and write the url that we want for our local once we have our local host colon eddy81 slash hello mule we can just click on send and we should see the hello mule body and the 200 ok response this means that everything is still working as expected congratulations you now know how to use best practices in your mule projects Remember to create a global file where you can keep all of your global elements configurations and create an external properties files per environment to keep all of the properties instead of hard coding all of the values in your code. Next steps for you is to just continue with the getting started tutorials and I will see you on the next video. Bye!